Okay, we're back, we're live on Community Matters. We're talking about art today, we're talking about the art of filmmaking today with Hema Del Barrio, wait, Hema Cubero, Cubero Del, Barrio. Del Barrio. Let me roll it off my tongue. Hema Cubero Del Barrio. You got it. If you didn't know, that's a Spanish name because mm -hmm. she was born and raised in and around Madrid. Yes. She's a Madrileno. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, Helen. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great to, great to have you. Last time we spoke, it was, what, a couple of years ago? Was it that long ago? And I you were doing so. a thing on cheesecake. You were doing a, a documentary uh, film on cheesecake in Kaimuki. Yes. You want to talk about that? How did, how did it go since we spoke? Uh, I made a wonderful piece about a wonderful man called Otto that has a, his business in Kaimuki now, Otto Cake. And um, I think I came here when we were about to go to the Hawaii International Film Festival. Yeah. And it was really fun. Yeah. Um, it was kind of like a, like a homecoming because Otto has always been in Honolulu. And then the film uh, show at the Doris Duke um, Theater and also in San Francisco at the Roxy Theater. So, yeah, it was, it was really lovely. You like making films. You really do. And, and you are so creative and intense about it. How did you get involved in filmmaking? You know, I don't have anybody in my family that comes from film, but I knew when I was a young girl that I wanted to tell stories. So my entryway was journalism. Actually, I became a journalist. I went to a journalism school in Madrid, then I came to the U.S. I ended up in North Carolina. And that school allowed me to kind of start to grab the camera and so on. But it was really in San Francisco years later uh, when I moved to San Francisco and I met Lourdes Portillo, this Mexican filmmaker, that I started working on a film about the killings of women in Mexico called Señorita Estraviada. And I remember you talked about that. And that I realized then in the desert in Juarez that that's what I wanted to do. That was kind of my calling. So what's, yes, calling, I, indeed, I, I totally, I feel that, yeah. Mm. Uh, what's your like philosophy about film? You like to do um, documentaries? You like true stories? What yeah. kind of true stories do you like? I like reality. I feel like I don't need to make anything up. <laughs> like, I just feel like reality is pretty is larger than fiction. And um, maybe because I come from journalism and I had very intense uh, initial experiences, I, I really love working with people. I love the fact that you start with an idea and you don't know where it's going to take you. I think that for me, documentary really opens me up. If I didn't have documentary, my life would probably be very small. So through documentary, I get to live the life of others. But I, I also know now that every time I'm doing a life about somebody else, I'm doing something about myself. So I feel like we are all like mirrors. And just, um, I'm always constantly le learning about other people and also about myself. We're all like mirrors. Sometimes that's you don't memorable. like what you see. And that's going to be on the final exam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now let's talk about Puka Puka. Mm. Uh, and I love the title of the film, Our uh, Atoll, At Atoll, Atoll mm -hmm. Speaks. Which okay. also we use the Puka Puka uh, title, which is intentional. And it's called Talatala Maito Mato Wenua. <clears throat> And Puka Puka um, is one of the islands, atolls, in the northern group of the Cook Islands. The Cook Islands is a nation of 15 islands. And this is, if you have to place it geographically, it's closer to Samoa, but there is no transportation. Um, there's very rare transportation that goes through Puka Puka. And Puka Pukans have their own language that is separate from the other. Their own language. Yeah. There's not a lot of people in Puka Puka. Yeah. No, um, right now I think there's around like 450 people living there, but there is a great deal of migration. So there is, most Puka Pukans live outside of Puka Puka. So they migrate mainly to um, New Zealand and Australia. So, so why Puka Puka, of all the places in the world? I know, I know, I, I have never heard of that place. But um, like about 14 years ago, I met a woman, Amelia Borowski, who is the daughter of an anthropologist, Robert Borowski. And um, she grew up in this atoll. She was taken there uh, when she was one year old until she was like four and a half. 
And she started telling me about this place that she didn't know if it was real or not real. And then um, a few years later, um, I started this project about this place, Puka Puka, her life, and also the life of Johnny Frisbee, who is another Puka Puka woman that grew up there. So, um, you know, some stories have come to me because I read it in the news. This film that I've been working Let, for seven years. Let your your guide, yeah. Well, this film just entered my life, and I didn't think it was going to be a film. Yeah. Uh, so this is film is called Homecoming, and I've been working on it for seven years. Seven years. And that's what, that was my entry point to Puka Puka. But uh, aside from the people yeah. and uh, looking at, you know, what it, what it is, what Puka Puka is, how it's come to be, you have uh, intertwined the whole notion of climate change and sea level rise. So it becomes very real and very, and very current. You know? Yeah. So, you know, when I work on films, uh, one of my challenges, or I don't know, it could be a vir virtue too, is that I don't make a film just about one thing. So Puka Puka is an amazing, rich place. So my, my feature-length film, Homecoming, that I'm finishing now, is about the two women and this atoll. When I was there, I realized this is such a rich, rich place. And like many other atolls in the Pacific, it's of course affected by climate change. But what's really unique about Puka Puka is that Puka Puka is outside of the capitalist system. It's its own culture and society. And they have been practicing conservation techniques with nature for more than 2,000 years. Uh. So in 2017, I was working on homecoming, on homecoming, and I needed to go back to film. And um, we got funding from the UNDP Environmental Fund, that is a fund of the, of the United Nations. And they gave me money to go to Puka Puka. And the, what I needed to do in return was give them a deliverable of a short film about climate change. But I just thought it was just a deliverable. And then what I realized after spending six months there is that, oh my God, these people have so much to offer. And I'm going to make a, a, an hour and a half film and I have so much material. So our Atoll Speaks comes out of um, filming more than 450 hours and choosing the knowledge that people have around nature and climate change. Um, so our Atoll Speaks is really about climate change, mm -hmm. but not, not with this kind of like, um, what is it called, catastrophic look at climate change, but more from the place of like, what do indigenous people, what do Puka Pukans have to offer to us uh, to, to be in nature and to live more of a respectful yeah, life? Yeah, we so, can learn from them. We should learn from them. I, that's the feeling that I got. The feeling that I got is like, wow, this is such a rich place. And we didn't want to make a film that was like, you know, everything is going to disappear. I mean, Puka Puka will disappear in less than 100 years if we don't do anything about climate change. But the place is really a communal film that I did with the Puka Puka people, with Johnny, with Amelia. And do your own camera? I, I do. I mean, I do, but I also like to work with other people. So, mm -hmm. um, so when you watch this film, you will see some of my footage. You will see some of the footage of Vicente Franco, who is a really fantastic cinematographer. And what really makes me happy is that the most gorgeous footage, which is the drone footage of the island, ah, uh, <laughs> is fantastic. It was shot all by a Puka Puka man called Letinga that had a drone when I got there. I got him an extra battery, so we could actually get away for more than 15 minutes. And it's really breathtaking. So he's a cinematographer of the piece, and it's really it's well, Let's look at uh, some clips, Emma. Okay, we got, uh, we got three or four clips. We'll go through them, and then you can explain each one as we, as we finish it. Let's look okay. at the first one. We are the children of Te Ulu Otewatu of Puka Puka. As its caretakers, we listen to the moon and to the tides. At the white wall, thank you for looking after us. Rustle the coconut fronds. Fish for you, murmurs the sea. A father will teach his son the ways of the ocean. A mother will teach her daughter the ways of the land. We have three ecological food reserves. 
Motuko, Motuko Tawa, and Motu Uta. Motuko has the fattest blue coconut crabs. Motuko Tawa has the juiciest flying seabirds. Motu Uta has the freshest coconuts. Well, beautiful people, beautiful land, beautiful shots. Mm. So tell us about that clip. So that is the beginning of the film. Um, and uh, the film starts with a myth of how Puka Puka um, was created. Um, oh. They believe that they come from a rock. Uh -huh. And it's a really beautiful myth. So we start with that, and then we just go into explaining, you know, some of their conservation practices. And um, what I really want to emphasize is that when you hear the voice, uh, the voice is the voice of Johnny Frisbee, who is this amazing woman that lives in Mano, and she's like a cook, she's a Puka Puka legend. Her father was, was Robert Dean Frisbee, uh, was the man that introduced Puka Puka to the world. So what we did is like, as I said before, we took, I have all these in interviews, we took it out, uh, we took the lines out of the interviews, um, the lines that talked about conservation and nature and climate change. And then um, we rewrote it a little bit so we'll have a narration form. And then Johnny Frisbee is the person that is actually narrating the film. Mm -hmm. So it's really, um, I cannot emphasize this enough. It's really not me making the film, it's really like Puka Pukans telling you what yeah. they have, yeah. you know, what they do daily. Yeah, you're yeah. carving the statue out of the marble. Yeah. <laughs> Let's kind of, yeah, I think film is about a sculpture in action. Uh, especially if you have 4,500 4, hours. <laughs> you have a lot of carving to do. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Okay, let's look at the second clip. The Council of Important People decides what and when to harvest. This is the Laui, the rules that decide when the villagers can gather and when to leave the land to replenish itself. If a child runs into the bush and grabs a small coconut crab by its back, a parent will say, don't kill the babies. Let it go until it's big enough to fill your stomach. Next year, it will be ready for a meal. People connected to the land understand life's rhythms. Conserve now, eat later. Beautiful life, a remote life, a simple life, a sweet life, lay back to the nth degree, no? And they do actually a lot of work because they have to maintain the island. Um, it's a um, fishing and hunting society too. I mean, you get food from the, bo from the boats and now they have solar power, they have internet. I mean, they're really in the world in the way that they want to be in the world. But it's definitely, they are following conservation practices, fishing practices, hunting practices for more than for thousands of years. Uh, the clip that you saw um, reminded me of the fact that the knowledge is passed from generation to generation. So the grandparents teach their um, grandkids, and that's how the knowledge is passed. Or oral history. Yeah. Oral history yeah. and doing. I mean, yeah. they're really laid back. One of the things that I learned about from them is just to be more grateful and more joyful because they do really enjoy life but they do work a lot like they have a, a, a very sophisticated system if you got into puka puka they will get you in a group of men and every morning for a certain amount of hours you will have to do community work and go and hunt coconuts and get up to the trees and i mean and go fishing to feed everybody i mean it's really an alive place it's there's a lot of, of the order community. Yeah, everything, you know, you will never go hungry there. They actually include you. If you got there, they will say, okay, we're going to give Jay like a caveo or two caveos or a certain amount of fish or taro. So fishing and taro are the main things mm -hmm. and also the coconut tree. Instead of drinking water, we drink coconut. <laughs> you really liked being there, didn't you? It was you? amazing. <laughs> Let's look at the third clip, Emma. Our atoll speaks. 
ko tala tala mai o kito a mātou e nua. How long can we call Puka Puka the island home? Climate change is the biggest threat to our existence. We need to look at the risk of rising seas in terms of our cultural practices so that we don't lose them. We cannot allow Puka Puka to disappear into a legend of Tamadei and Mataliki, like the way Kiripasi and Tuvalu and other islands in the Pacific disappear into the sea. If Puka Puka goes under the sea, we are all under the sea. My umbilical cord is buried here. If that goes underneath, that is literally me going under the sea. We pray the international community can do something so that I don't go underwater. If beautiful, Emma, it's a beautiful place. It's it's really the Pacific. Pacific is so quiet. No big waves. No surfing. I'm sorry to say, huh? No, no surfing. <laughs> and, I, and a lot of the movie is a, an exploration of the place and the people as an exquisite example of uh, something we haven't seen. Something that we haven't seen and something that we can learn from. Uh, yeah, that's the that's the feeling that I got, and yeah. that yeah, they have so much to offer. In order to make this movie, you really had to understand it. You had to mm -hmm. observe it. You had to participate in it. Mm -hmm. You had to engage with the people. You had to mm -hmm. see the, the whole place. I could have never done this film without them. Um, so definitely, yeah. You cannot get to Puka Puka. They will not let you in if you, don't, if they, if you haven't followed the protocols. Yeah. And um, I felt really lucky because with Johnny and Amelia, they were like daughters of Puka Puka. So... I was able to go in, and they really welcomed me, and they treated me like um, their own. So I feel really fantastic. Um, tomorrow there's going to be like a, the film has gone to New Zealand. Uh, we premiere there. It was fantastic because most Puka Pukans live in the diaspora in, in New Zealand. So we did the screenings there, and tomorrow the film is going to premiere for the first time at the Te Kuki Airani Film Festival in the Cook Islands, and we have. Um, organize that the Puka Puka people will do a performance of their own, you know, drumming and dancing, and then the film is opening the festival. So that's kind of amazing to me because th this film is about them. Yeah. And then it will show on Cook Islands Television right after. So we've seen what three clips so far. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to see the trailer, mm. and the trailer is diff how is the trailer different than the clips you've shown us? So as you heard in the clips, you know, you can hear the voice of Johnny Frisbee because the clips are sections of the film. Um, and the trailer, what I wanted to do was really to take you there in a kind of like a magical place. Um, there's only a couple of lines our atoll speak, you know, at the very end. And I, I think a quote about uh, climate change. So the film is really the message, has an urgent message of if if this place, if we don't do something, if the international community doesn't do anything about climate change, we will go under, and if, and I will be, I will die with it. You know, my umbilical cord will be buried there. Yeah. So that was to me when I was trying to make a, a film with when I was trying to make the trailer with my editor Kion Lee, who is my collaborator. I was very intentional about I want to make sure that the wave is there, and that there is a short message that is about, you know, climate change. But I also wanted to take you to this kind of like real place. It's magical, but it's real. Okay, let's see the trailer now.
We are the children of Te Ulu o Te Watu of Puka Puka. How long can we call Puka Puka the island home? Climate change is the biggest threat to our existence. Our atoll speaks. That's pretty, that's pretty inviting, Emma. It really is. <laughs> I wanted to mention, I forgot, uh, about the music that you hear in the trailer. Yes. So that is a recording that was done by um, a man that was um, there in the 1970s, um, Kevin Salisbury, who's actually helping me now with the translation of the Puka Puka. And, and he recorded that song. And the music in Puka Puka is exquisite, like the a cappella music. So. For homecoming, I'm going to have really amazing music from the place, but I want it. That is a national, that is the Puka Puka anthem. So it gives me chicken skin every time I hear it. And um, that was very intentional to, to play that throughout the, the film. Are, are you going to go back? Are you, you know, uh, yeah, I, I made a, so when this film premiered in New Zealand the day before, I promised them that they will see the work before anybody else. So I couldn't go there because there's no transport. It costs. You have to charter a plane to get there oh, if you no, want to, really? which I did to return from my first shoot. But um, we organized a screening in Puka Puka. So the world premiere happened in Puka Puka. You know how in <laughs> film great. festivals you have to go to Sundance or Berlin? <laughs> yeah. So we did go it the Puka opposite Puka. way. We started in Puka Puka. <laughs> and, um, did they I, like it? Oh, yeah. It was very <laughs> sweet. And I intentionally, I, we, I put everybody in the ending credits of the film. So when you get to the end, they, I said, can you send me the names of everybody? So they gave me 450, oh, that's wonderful. 4, 450 <laughs> names by village, by area, uh -huh. and also listed by men, women, and children. <laughs> so I have a really long list of credits, that's but beautiful. it makes me so happy. Like then, you know, film is forever. Yeah. And I think there is something about seeing your name on the screen. That is kind of like, okay, well, so I, I and I, at some point, I can do, I can make some decisions. So I just, it was really fun to put everybody there. Yeah. Well, I hope you can go back for a long time because you may not be able to. No? I know. And I do want to, I, yeah, when I finish the feature length, I would like to go back and, yeah, I mean, yeah, I definitely will it's go back. You know, this place was, may I say, made for you. And on the other side, you were made for it. This is a marriage of a person and a place. Well, you know, I am from, I come from, I don't come from water. I don't come from the Pacific. I, I come from a very, very small town, actually, north of Madrid, Medina del Campo, or San Pablo de la Moraleja. And it's very, very rural. When I was in Puka Puka and I was walking through the streets of Puka Puka, there's only one main street, I felt like I was home in my father's hometown. So that was like, I was like, what is this about? Because I was surrounded by that beautiful water and the palm trees, and definitely that's not Castilla. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's not Spain. But I feel like by making this film, the place has really, and the people have really given me a, a, a huge gift. Yeah, aren't you worried, though, that uh, making a film, because a film is media, mm. a film is publicizing things, if this film, or I should say when this film, yeah. you know, hits the market, so to speak, yeah. Um, and wins a lot of awards. People will go to happen. Puka Puka, won't they? Okay. Aren't you afraid that Puka Puka is a fragile place and it's easily, it's easily tampered with, it's uh, easily damaged? So my intention with this film was to make something that will serve them. So I, Puka Puka is a very sophisticated society. They have a tribal system, a government system, everybody gives their manaco or their advice. So while I was making the film, everybody was informed about it. And I know that they don't want to be developed. They have development, they have solar power, they function really well. 
And it's really going to be up to them what they want to do with the impact of the film. I don't want Puka Puka to change, you know. Um, but it's really going to—it's going to be their call. I am just—I feel like as a filmmaker, I'm just a vehicle to, to share a message. But then it's really their call what they want to do with it. For instance, could they get better transportation for their own people? That could be a good thing for their own people. Do they want to make hotels? No. They have to manage it, just like Hawaii has to manage it. Every island community has to manage these you things. You know, I really look forward to the film show to show in Hawaii because, you know, I've spent enough time in Hawaii to understand a little bit of the, the richness of the culture. Mm -hmm. And when I was in Puka Puka, um, I remember I was filming the creation of a Pola house, of a Kikau house. And one of the guys came to me after hours of film and I said, like, Emma, what do you think uh, they will think of Hawaii, of how we make our homes here? And I said, Harris, your work will be in a museum. <laughs> will be at the Bishop Museum. You know. So, so I think they have so much to offer. And my hope, if they want to, and they do want to, is that when the film premieres here, that there could be some kind of like cultural exchange or that. Because really, it's a true Polynesian yeah, sure. world. So where are we on the continuum of, of, of releasing this film? <clears throat> you have a premiere. Yeah. You went to New Zealand to yeah. a film festival. Yeah. Um, and you just came back. Just came back from New Zealand. I just Zealand. came back. So How now, did that go and, and what follows? Oh, it was really beautiful because, you know, so, I, so this deliverable became a film. And then I was like, wait a minute. I talked to the fan and I said, could you give me some time? I own the film. But because of the UN, I wanted, they wanted to make it publicly available to everybody. But you know how the, festi the film festival world works. I said, can you give me some time before I make it public for everybody to really take it to festival? So I was intentionally going to New Zealand because of the diaspora. I want the film to, to keep showing in New Zealand, um, to keep to show in Australia, because that's where most Pukapukans live. Uh, we, it's going to show here in Hawaii soon. I, I cannot tell you where. But maybe I can come back <laughs> okay. a little bit later you, in the year. You must uh, let us know. Uh, yeah. uh, so it's going to be really available. Yeah. Uh, but I cannot say where yet. Just yet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and so my intention was that part of the world that understands, you know, the Pacific, uh, New Zealand, Australia, Hawaii, and then go east, you know, um, hopefully premiere also in Europe and in the U.S. Yes, I hope so. I, I'm, yeah. I'm with you on that. And then the film will be available. Uh, I think it's a really, it will be a really great educational tool. We want to create like a, an outreach campaign. We're already doing it, like an educational plan. Because the film, I think, can just be used a lot in the educational market. You've alluded to, you know, what the film is intended to show. You've alluded to the kind of reaction you expect. But, I'm, you know, in a larger sense, you know, film is media. Film is communication. Film like this, especially with the, you know, the sensitive issues involved um, and the threatening issues involved, um, will have an effect on people yeah. because it will show them, you know, like the end of the world. I mean, the, the last place. Mm. <clears throat> it will show them how beautiful that can be. It will show them in a nostalgic sense, in a sense of loss, what we have, we all of us have lost uh, over the, the last few hundred years. Um, you know, how would you like them, what kind of effect would you like to see happen from the film you've made, put so much time into, what kind of effect would you like, what would you like people to really take away and act on, act on, because they've seen this film? I feel like my role as a filmmaker is to shed light onto realities that already exist. Puka Puka has been there for thousands of years, so I happen to be lucky to make this film. I want people to understand that this is a very rich, sophisticated place that we can learn from, that we could maybe start being more conscious about conservation practices, about how not to waste, you know, food, about how to be more respectful with each other and with nature, how we can learn from grandparents and, you know, your parents, and how, how knowledge can be uh, transferred to yeah. generations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, about family. Family, you know, um, but um, and I, 
I want, I mean, it gives me a lot of pride to know that Puka Pukans are going to have these films about them because there's not a, um, what's happening tomorrow in the Cook Islands is historical because they've never been documented by in film. So it's true, the beauty of film is that it lasts forever. So I think it will just, I just want you to, to be like immersed in it and then that you care more about climate change that you could actually, we'll create a, a, a lesson plan and an impact campaign so you, you actually can watch the film and then do something yeah. about it. Immerse may be a very appropriate word because mm. sea level rise is rising and the film may, loss, may last longer than Puka Puka lasts. Yeah, sad to say, but yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah. Well, I, this is a great contribution. Thank I'm you. so glad you came to talk to us about it. Yeah, I wish thank you, you for well having me. I always love talking with you. It's, it's the same fun. thing, Emma. Hemo Cubero del Barrio, <laughs> filmmaker. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>